when these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made a hundred million dollars and now don't have to talk to that artist. Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. He said, I'm about making money. I don't give a f if Pac gotta die, Big gotta die, or Suge Knight go to jail. You're out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Labels don't care for die. In this hidden interview with Cat Williams, we'll jump back and forth and show you that he talks about the entertainment industry and the music industry and exposes all their secrets, how they take you down when you don't do what they want and make you worthless, and how they make millions off of you after you're dead. I am in the production business. I understand. Cat explains they could take you down whenever they want. You get to this level, we can make sure we knock you from a $20 million man to putting in the news that people won't hire you no more and your career is done. I'm saying that everything that happens in a business that's based off of pretend that seems like a setup is. I'm gonna have to agree with Cat because even that Diddy home raid seemed very suspicious how they set it up and other celebrities agree. Homeland Security, they came in there with tanks down there, and uh, military motherfuckers 25 deep. One dancing gonna have 50 goddamn troops at his goddamn mansion. Isn't it ironic? Part two of this. I wanna know who told the camera crews that they were going down there to raid his house. They already set up, had the mother satellites, the helicopters that all, all over the top to get the aerial view, just to, you know, sensationalize the story. This is why I'm saying somebody's behind this shit staged. If it's really just a, a quick, fast hit on the mother's property, you ain't gonna call the press and say, we about to hit Puffy's crib. You're just gonna hit the crib. We seen the aerial shot of them driving up and arriving at this mother's crib. Somebody's behind it. Somebody way up the ladder. And I think that ladder is the head of Universal Music Group. This could have been a message to Diddy to get in line and do what they say or they'll put you in jail. Ever since Cassie opened that lawsuit against Diddy, everything's been downhill. But she should be trusted when you clearly see this video of Diddy physically assaulting her going crazy nuts. He's a violent, uncontrollable person. And that's clear. According to her lawsuit, Diddy punched her and gave her a black eye. And that's why she decided to leave the hotel room, but he wasn't gonna let her go. Months after the lawsuit was filed, this video comes out, which says exactly what happens. He grabbed at her and took glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her. If he did this to the girlfriend that he loves, imagine what he did to his best friend, Biggie Smalls. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. And Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of Bad Boy. His catalog. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse. Very valuable. The commission. What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy and then starting his own company. Yeah, Big had a contract. So I was asking Big's questions about that and Big was showing me a contract. So he showed me, I said, you about to get that money? He said, yeah, look at this. It had Charlie Baltimore, Cameron, Little C's, Little Kim, Junior Mafia, Tracy yeah. Lee, and the commission. I think the contract was for so many years for like 62 million, it comes out to like $62 million. I'm like, damn. Here, Cat Williams breaks it down clearly how music executives are getting rid of these rappers to keep their publishing and make millions. What I'm saying is in business, nothing is coincidental or you would be hearing who's losing money. In all of these situations, it's only the artist that's losing. Somebody makes big money. When these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made a hundred million dollars and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew don't have to validate none of their contracts. Now only got to deal with the mama, only got to see her once a year and it's over. And the money, he goes up and up and up. So they killed this $20 million guy, but they reached 60 million in benefits. Wow. And I have some people from your city do it. <laughs> I'm saying there, there's the good side and the bad side of, of, of these businesses. Cap breaks it down perfectly, resembling exactly what's happening in the world today. But Diddy has been expecting to be taken down for a long time because he puts everything in his mom's name. I did this told my he wanted receipts. Let's start with your mother. Your mother got the receipts. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts. 
You need more proof? Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. All money ain't good money. Remember that. But check this out, bro. Do you ever think of this? Why did Diddy put everything in his mom and his son's name? Did he know that he was doing some things behind the scene? Or he did he know that some things was going on that may bring it to this point where people be trying to sue him, but everything is in Justin's name and everything is his mama's name and his daughter's now? I don't know, bro. Now, what if I told you that Diddy took everybody's publishing and put it in his mom's name, even back in the days from making the band on MTV? Every artist is getting the same bad deal. We sold the records. We, we had the number one show. We had three seasons. Like, we did all the work. And it's like everybody around back where we're just effing us. We signed for like, I think 25,000 a piece. And then I probably got, they say we signed with Janice Cohn. How your mama get my publishing? I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a lot of, anyway. I heard Puff say, I don't give a F if Pop gotta die. I don't give a F if Big gotta die. And Suge Knight can go to jail. From he just had ran from Pop and Suge and from Soul Train. Cause he was talking, he kept on saying, I'm tired of this sh When he walked up the steps after he said it, my man looked at him, me and he said, yo, he said Big. That nigga said Big. You're right, he did say Big. Wish death on your friend. In a radio interview, Lil C said that Diddy bought Notorious B.I.G.'s publishing for $200,000 in 1995 because Biggie apparently was broke despite having a hit record. While those claims were refuted, it seems that Diddy still owns his publishing. That's whack. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie. You put hot on him. That stand next to the fight if you want. Right? You stood next to me. Mm -hmm. Stood next to Jock. Look, Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. Nobody survives. Now, Kanye West speaks out a lot and everybody makes him look crazy. But is he? I can't send none of y'all meek mills, y'all puffies, none of these people that have to listen to y'all because they're dealing with, they have legal. I never killed nobody. But that means I can say whatever I want and not go to jail. No. Puff daddy, all you fake hard you. And the reason why you got talks is because you did a deal, you fed. That's why you got to come at me because part of the deal for you to be a do all that. Da -da 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're gonna go pull my co-car. Co -car. So y'all shut the f up about me. So in all of these situations, there's a business involved and there's real money involved and somebody's benefiting from this thing that looks like, oh, that just happened. Nah, no way. They took millions and millions of dollars from us. Do I feel like I should have got more money? Absolutely. Many of the label's former artists say that they made hits and have little to show for it. How they say Diddy continues to make millions off their backs. There is a business where they fiddle with the perception of the people, and that's part of the job. Back in the day, it used to be called propaganda. Now it's just called business. In 1999, hip-hop trio The Locks started the Free The Locks campaign, vying to be released from their bad boy contract. Diddy did let them out of their label deal, but kept 50% of their publishing. This all came to a head in a now classic 2005 radio interview with Angie Martinez. How much money are we talking? A couple million? I would say a couple million. I can't even say. I'm not even sure. We paid a couple million to get out. Pay almost three million to get out. We to get off no, bad boy. Yeah, we had no million dollar budget. We did one album there, inch. We did one album. We did money, power, respect there. This ain't for we, albums. This is for life. This is for life, too. This is why it's worth killing. It ain't like when this contract's up. So if this is so for the rest of your life, if you make a song, you have the way it stands, on it. he gets money no matter what. If we make a give it to yeah. me or in the club, he's gonna make more off that than we are. The music business is dirty, and here TLC's Left Eye, who unfortunately passed away, explains how her group sold 10 million albums and they had no money. This is how a group could sell 10 million records and be broke. Every time an album gets sold, TLC gets 56 cents. So 10 million records, $5.6 million. Now keep in mind, people were still buying CDs then, so 10 million albums was $150 million, and that's how little they even got to start with. And then they owe the record label money. And in the record business, we pay all costs back to the record company. We pay recording costs, video costs. So now we have $2.6 million left. Well, guess what? When you have that much money, you're in about the 47, 48, 49% tax bracket. So that immediately gets deducted to $1.3 million. 
Then you split the rest three ways. You got about $300,000 a piece, if that much. Now Kat's gonna tell you guys how even the biggest of superstars, things look like they were on accident, but they were set up to take you down. Cause once you don't play by their rules, you're no use to them. They decided that they were finished with Will when he did After Earth with Jaden. Cause there was no way they was gonna let Jaden on because Jaden didn't have to do what you had to do to get in. We're not gonna let you put Jaden and Willow on. And from there, they've done what was necessary to take him from a $20 million a movie Correct. to put him in a position where maybe it can appear he has a nervous breakdown and now is unemployable. Now, not surprisingly, something like this happened with Dave Chappelle in Comedy Central. And we heard it directly from one of his co-stars on Half Baked. His name is Jim Brewer. We were filming Half, we were filming a movie and he also had a lot of pressure, Comedy Central Comedy and all this Central, right? the worst bunch of people on earth. Horrid. He then, while he was on the show, when it was blowing up, remember the Aspen Comedy Festival? He came there and he was freaked out. What's going on? And all I could say is he was visited. And when he told me who visited him, my heart stops for a oh, second. Shit. I'm like, get the fuck. He went, you believe me, right? You believe me, Jim, right? He's like, they came to me and he said the names. I'm like, get the fuck. And what happened? And then all of a sudden he went to Africa. I know for a fact. He was corrected. Correct. He was, hey, uh, oh, no. we need to have a conversation. Um, would you like some of your own coffee in your house? Straight out of a movie. Somebody making their selves coffee in your house, telling you to sit down because it's time to talk. Does it shock you they tried to make Dave Chappelle look crazy? And it's not racist. They did it with the white actors as well. They cut down Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and all of them from $20 million a movie people to left them out there to dry and restructured everything. This this is business. Now it all comes back around to this Drake versus Kendrick beef because the music labels win when other people stream their old music that they still own. It cuts Drake's soul. It's like he signed a, uh, his soul to the devil. Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy. Kendrick shifted the energy. Now, I'll say this, and this is one of the things where, this is when, this is when you know that when real music people are talking versus like these other ancillary bullshit people. Drake is at the point where he has ultimate leverage over his situation with, uh, um, with UMG. If Drake is, at any point could leave, they own part of his catalog. That's why sometimes labels don't care for die because they own the shit already. They own the shit they're gonna get most of the money from. They have to give Drake more money than they've ever given him to get probably less of a return than they probably used to get. And it's because Drake owns some of his masters. Back in the day, he didn't own that. Here's what I'm trying to say. So my point is this, if anything, at a point UMG might be like, yo, we might need to sacrifice Drake to make the next one, not protect him while we're 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 losing leverage. As the more successful so, Drake gets, they lose leverage. Lucian, maybe some other executives, maybe trying to get at Drake because he's spreading the equity to other companies, third party Yo, companies within the industry. Lucian right now and UMG are probably saying, as long as this stays within the family, we don't have a horse in the race. And actually, Drake has gotten so big, we rather it be someone else that 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 replaces him more than just giving Drake. You know, everybody's careful of somebody like Drake and even Taylor. Like, I think Taylor's gonna be a big problem. She's just too successful though. Getting to that point of where Michael Jackson was at, where essentially he was looking at the major labels as just like a partner and he was also buying up other people's catalog to leverage later. Drake's at the point where the labels ain't gonna protect him because it's not about love, it's about business. If anything, they're like, yo, let's get our money that we, we gave him, the 400 million, let's recoup all that. And let's, we own this catalog anyway. We own the catalog. Fans can't understand why, you know, with all due respect, and I wanna call this person's name, Pop Smoke's label is making more money off Pop Smoke now more than they would have ever made off Pop Smoke while he was alive. Same with Juice World. Their lock in perpetuity in catalog, in, in, their catalog is owned by those entities for life, for life. The more you become a established artist, you start to negotiate. All that, you go look at Drake's last release, it says OVO Sound slash Republic. Go look at Kendrick's release, it, it, it says just Kendrick Lamar, PG Lang. That's the sign that an artist is gaining leverage over the, a, a, the um, 
the, the machine. And why the hell would the machine care about your future works when they already own your past? Kendrick Lamar, who supposedly is just now being distributed. I don't, I don't know if it's through uh, Sony or whatever. You know who owns his back catalog? So, every, so everybody, they did a stat this week. Chart data was like, Kendrick's back catalog is up 65%. Who do you think is eating off of that? Kendrick don't own his back catalog. You think he owns Good Kid Mad City? No, he don't. You think he owns the Pimper Butterfly? No, he don't. So you know who makes money off of that this week? UMG. They're over here like, thank you, mother. You went independent or whatever the f went. Yeah, we have a distribution dealer or some shit with you. But every time you get lit, your back catalog, we make money off. That's why it would benefit a label if somebody died because you don't get to make no more music that's not on their shit. People only get to get, get your old shit that they forever get money off. Well, guys, let me know in the comments what you think, whether or not you believe it's true or not true. What's your opinions on Diddy and Cat exposing the industry? He's been right a lot lately. And this interview is pretty old and he still hits the nail on the head with everything he says. I'll see you guys on a video for tomorrow.